Okay, so we're going to get into section 2.1 and derivatives. And the most important one you can learn is right here. And you, it's essentially saying, what is the value of a, which is any point on a graph, the number of a, um, such that h is approaching the zero, where f of a plus h minus f of a. And what this all you're doing is finding the slope again. You're finding the slope. What is the tangent slope? at point A as H approaches zero, and it's written in limit format. And this is probably the most important thing you can uh, learn, and it's the same as this format right here where H approaches A. And it's the same thing. So they always give a great example. So when you're looking at the point of minus uh, X is equal to minus 3 for this particular graph, which is a parabola, you uh, find F of minus 3, which in this case is minus 3 into the formula squared, and you find f of minus 3h plus h, which is that, into the formula. So all you, it is a squared. Then they expand the left, and you discover that the 9 minus 9 disappears. And then you can factor an h out of the h uh, minus 6 plus h squared. The h's were cancel out, and you're left with this. And now finally, you can substitute 0 in for h, and you discover the answer is minus 6. Therefore, the derivative for f of x at x of x squared when x is minus 3 is minus 6. So in this case, it's very specific to that point. And then they rewrite it like this, where you can, f uh, instead of having f of a plus h uh, minus a, they do it in sort of slope format, which is saying we're taking f of x, we're subtracting uh, the point of f of a, and then we're just taking x and we're subtracting point a. And you're going to discover this is no different than that. It's the same thing, rewritten. And it's just sort of saying if you know uh, point A based on f of x. Um, determine the derivative for any value of x within x squared. OK, fair enough. And then determine the slope for the specific value of x is equal to minus 1, 0, and 1. So first of all, how do you do that when you, they don't give you a specific x and an x plus h? Well, you simply put x into x squared, and you pu simply put x plus h, wherever you see x, into x squared. So here they go ahead and do it. They square that. They minus x squared, and they expand this, which is x squared plus 2hx plus h squared. That's always the expansion. And then they subtract x squared. Well, notice that the x squareds cancel out, and you're left with 2hx plus h squared. And when you factor out an h, you get h, 2x plus h. Factoring something out is just dividing it out. And then you'll notice that you're always going to end up with this situation where you have h up top multiplying something, and h at the bottom, and they can always cancel out. So you're left with this lovely thing here, 2x plus h. But remember, it says h approaches 0. So when we substitute 0 in for h, that just disappears. And we're left with 2x. That's fantastic. You now have a formula for any value of x that will give you the, f this is a formula for the slope of the tangent for any value of x, specifically for x squared. Now I want you to know something. x squared suddenly became 2x to the power of 1. Huh, remember that. So now we realize, here we go, the derivative for f of x is to x squared at any arbitrarily value of x is given as this, this is called f prime x, and it's a way of saying the derivative of this specific formula is 2x. Then they ask you to find out, well, what is it for um, specifically minus 2, 0, and 1? Well, let's just sub that into the formula of the tangent slope we found out. So if it's minus 2, we're going to get a value of minus 4. If it's 0, we're going to get a value of 0, and it's f of prime 1 for x is equal to 1, we get a slope of 2, which tells me that the slope is going downwards on of the tangent, minus 4. It also tells me the slope is flat here, which implies to me that this is the vertex. And then the slope's going upwards here. And when you graph it, that makes sense. So then they're going to give it to you this, again like this, and they're asking you to figure out over and over again for various values of x. And you're going to come out, oh, it's heading down on any values left of the vertex. Then at the vertex, it's flat. Then it's heading right, it's heading up. 
And even for a value unknown of a, you can simply plug a into the formula, and you get a and a squared, and you determine that slope is the same thing, plugging a into 2x is 2a. And they give you this nice drawing over here to show you all the values are going down to the left of the vertex and going up. Uh, the slope is positive over here. And then you'll notice that a tangent line is always simply a line. And here they've graphed uh, the value, the slope. They've graphed the tangent line. Is this straight line going from down here all the way up. And you'll notice the values that we found for any value of x are on this tangent line. So here they've graphed the actual tangent line. And right there, there it is in a dotted line. And it can solve any value of x for f of x squared. Okay, determine the derivative with respect to this and this and that. Okay, then they run you through the same steps. You've got to do the same steps for this over and over again. And guess what? You're going to discover... And I'll show we're going to get more, and this is the important thing that will save you a lot of calculation. You're going to discover the tangent f formula for the tangent. The derivative formula for this graph is this, 3x squared. And you're going to discover for this is this, 4x cubed. And you're going to discover for this is this, 5x to the 4. I want you to notice a pattern. This 3 went down in front, and the exponent went down by 1. This 4 went down in front, and the exponent went down by 1. This 5 went down in front, and this exponent went down by 1. That's an important thing to note. But you're going to want to do it the long way, which is x plus h. So for this cubic, for x is equal to cubed, cubed minus x cubed. And you're going to expand this and do the whole thing, and then solve for h, get rid of h, and fig figure out that what's left is 3x squared. They, and that's an important thing for you to do. Okay, And then they summarize the chapter here, and then they ask you to solve. And um, I'm just responding here to something. But then they do it for tough derivatives. And for tough derivatives, like when we're doing it with a root, that's where we have to rationalize the numerator in order to solve. You can discover you can use that... Um, Let me use to verify your work. Uh, you're going to discover that this technique works for no matter what uh, function you're trying to solve. But for root functions, you're going to have to use the technique of conjugate multiplication. And for rational functions, which are in the form of 1 over x, you're going to have to use the technique of common denominator. And as long as you remember the techniques, we're going, you're going to uh, solve them. There's one other thing they want you to notice, that the tangent line, which is this red line, has this perpendicular line that goes through the same point called the normal line. So it has a perpendicular slope, but it goes through the same point. We're not going to use normal too much early on, but it's important to notice. It's also important to notice that when you have a sharp turning point, like in the absolute value, there is technically no derivative at that point. There is for parabola's vertex, but notice how sharp that is. There's also no tangent when the thing is going vertically upwards, and that's because there is no uh, there is no run, so it would be division of zero. So you won't be able to find a vertical tangent. And there's also technically no tangent for discontinuous points because it would be different here and here. So those are the exceptions. And then uh, reasoning it out, absolute value. So that's kind of a, a weird one. And uh, I kind of went through it before. And this is another version of derivative. It's called uh, d based on the change of dx. So it's important to notice the notation because we're also going to use that. Okay, And then they summarize it here. And they give you the couple of uh, rules and they give a couple notations. But let's get right to the exercises. State the domain on which x and y uh, are... Um, derivatives. Okay, so right here you can find a um, derivative for any x value except at this sharp point right here. Except when x, except for that point. You can't find a derivative there. 
Same for this point right here. So you can find a derivative for any value here except for when x is 1. So no. And here you can find any derivative except for the asymptote. So x, e, r, but not where x is 2. No. Here, because the line goes on forever that way and forever that way, you can find a derivative for any value of x here. And then going downwards, well, it didn't give me, of course, it didn't give me the rest of it. And then going downwards, here, because this is going on forever that way and this ever, that way and it's a parabola, so it bends here, you can find a derivative for any value. Ah, but here, you cannot find a derivative technically, well, you will find a derivative of 2. You won't find a limit. So you will find a derivative here, it's 0, and any value here. So for x is bigger or equal to 2, you will indeed find a derivative. Okay, let's just keep going. Explain the derivative of a function represents. The derivative of a function represents a formula for determining the slope of the tangent line at that point, at any point, at any point of x. Okay? So, for instance, the if f of x, if this is the function, the derivative formula is 2x. So this can determine the slope, and only the slope, not the formula of the line, just the slope of the tangent line. Let's illustrate two situations where function does not have a derivative of x is equal to 1. Well, I don't have to. There's some up there. Okay? And for each of these functions, determine this. Well, it's quite simple. I'm only going to do it for 1, and then you can do it for all of them, because they're all the same. So I'll take a slightly difficult one. Okay, and here's the formula, and it's important to keep in mind. And it's also keep important to keep in mind that the actual function uh, is always going to be divided by h, but that they, in this case, just want you to find this. What is this in this case? And what is that? And that's just to get you to to used to it. So here's what you do. You take the, func the function, give yourself a little bit of room. Oop, a little bit of, uh, come on. Take the function, give yourself a little bit of room on some of it. And wherever I see x here, I'm going to replace it with a plus h. And obviously, we're going to often be given a point, but we're going to do it like that. And wherever I see x, I'm going to replace it with a plus h. And then to figure this one out, we might as well figure this one out as well. Whenever I see x, right, I'm going to actually just put in a. Okay. And you're going to discover something. So first, before we figure this out, let's figure this out. You know, I probably have to enlarge it so you can see it a bit better. Right. Okay, so all we're doing is finding this. So let's expand this. a squared plus 2ah plus h squared, so know your expansion, plus a plus h minus 6. Okay, let's add them up. Do I have any other a's in here? No. Do I have any other h's in here? No. Do I have any 6's in here? No. So that's what I'm left with. Let's expand that one. Well, it's done. So now we're going to look at this, which is just this minus that. And that's the big key here. So I'm going to take this, which is this left side here. And I'm going to subtract, all in brackets, the expansion of that. Okay, and what does that become? It becomes minus a squared minus a. And plus 6. All right, so let's see what we can balance out. We got minus 6 plus 6. They're gone. We've got uh, a squared over here minus a squared. So they're gone. And we've got an a here and a plus a and a minus a. So they're gone. So what are we left with? We're left with h squared 
plus 2AH plus uh, H, if I've rearranged everything in order of power. Okay. All right. And that's what you're left with. And, you, and that's just what they want you to solve. But keep in mind that it's all going to be divided by H. And if I factor out an H from all of this, I'm left with 1 here. 2a here and just an h here and these are going to cancel out and I'm going to be left with h plus 2a plus 1 and but keep in mind it's always when the h approaches 0 so I'm going to be left with this as a derivative formula when a goes into this formula instead notice a pattern yeah the numbers disappear the number comes down here and the exponent becomes one less and if this had a one here it would come down here plus one and this would become a zero and just disappear oh look at that this is a pattern so they just want you to get used to finding it you follow the same steps each time you just sub it into the formulas and subtract that from the formulas and you'll discover a lot cancels out each time okay Part B, here's where we actually get into it. And they just keep using A. I think what I'm going to do instead is just use X. But just keep in mind that, uh, yeah, they're, they're looking for you to solve for A. which Just because they want you to dif differentiate that A is any point on a graph as opposed to X. Um, yeah. But what I'm going to do, uh, and then they go ahead and give you a is equal to 1, so there's not much point. What I'm going to do instead, yeah, they want you to find out specific points. I don't really, do they really? Okay, I guess I'm going to do it. So the formula is this, minus that. You could also do, sorry, a over h, you could also do this. like that if you want okay and just remember that one is going to go in here and here and whatever you solve for X but we're going to use this one okay so what is F of A well they've already told me it's one so one squared is one And what is this? This is 1 plus h, so when I put it in there, it becomes 1 plus h squared. And when I expand that, I can get rid of that f now. When I expand that, I get 1 plus 2h plus h squared, all of it minus 1, and all of it divided by h. I discover that these 1s are canceling, and that one of the h factors into this and gets rid of that one. So I'm left with 2 plus h, but of course it's always h approaches 0, which means 2 is my answer. And that makes sense if I were to find the derivative without putting a is equal to 1, I would discover it's 2x. And that means when a is 1, 2 times 1 is 2. Using the other technique is not much different. It's f of x minus f of a all over x minus a so f of x is just x squared and f of a when this is 1 is simply 1 down below it's x and what was a it's simply 1 notice that this top value is when we plug 1 into the formula and get our y it's not the actual x value Okay, so this is the y value, this is the x value. It's the same as delta y minus delta x, uh, minus uh, delta y over delta x. It's the same thing. Okay, so obviously I can't cancel out, can I? Except the top is factorable. It becomes x plus 1 and x minus 1 over x minus 1. And it cancels out. Oh, I might have gotten something wrong there. OK. 
cancels out. And is it as is it as x? Oh, it's as x approaches a. That's right. So now, as x approaches a, and a is one, when we substitute the one in here, we get two. And that's how it's solved, because we couldn't do x approaches a back here, because a minus a is zero. So you have to find a way to get rid of the bottom. And that's how you do it like that. You can discover it works both ways. Just remember that in one case, x is approaching a, and the other case, h is approaching zero. Important distinction. All right, but I'm gonna keep it in the h format, um, and I'm gonna do a slightly more complicated one, so we're gonna do it for this one. So what is f of a? We'll put zero in there, and we get square root of one, so f of a is one. Is one. So we got zero for the x, or for the a value and one for the f of a value. And then for um, the other side, a plus h, I can't do it. I can, I put one plus h. And then we can't forget this plus one there. Because this here is just replacing the x. And how did I get one plus h? Well, it's really a plus h minus f of a, right? f of a plus h and that's what I get and so that's what I put in and then when I knew that a is already 0 sorry not 1 a is already 0 I can put the 0 in here like that and I just get h plus 1 because a they've given me a 0 and this minus f of a 1 I can replace with 1 all of it over h but we can't solve it as h approaches 0 because we have that. And what did we spend all the last chapter doing? Multiplying by the conjugate. So I'm going to multiply this whole thing by the conjugate, which is plus 1, plus 1, all of it over itself. All of it over itself. So when we multiply the top, when I multiply the top, I get the square root disappears. And when I multiply the bottom, I get negative square root of 1, negative 1. Okay, all of it over h times this conjugate, which I can't solve yet. Yeah, I'll do it like that. h times this conjugate. Okay, get rid of this other stuff now, just to make it slightly more clear. I know I'm not very clear. Well, up top, what is h plus 1 minus 1? It's simply h D over h times something. So these h's can cancel out. I'm left with 1 over the conjugate. Now I can solve for h is equal to 0 because it's not going to affect the denominator. When h is 0 here, I get square root of 1, which is 1. So 1 plus 1, 1 over 2. And that makes sense even if I uh, use the technique I know, which is a half. So the derivative is going to be a half. It's going to be 1 over 2 times x plus 1. And when that is 0, this whole thing becomes 1. It becomes 1 over 2. So that is correct. That's the long way of doing it. Uh, I don't know if I want to do it with the f of i. Ah, sure. Let's do it with the f of a method. So it's saying f of x minus f of a is going to be uh, x minus a. And of course, we're giving it a 0 down here. So we're just giving x minus 0 down here. So that just simply becomes that. What is f of a? When a is 0, we've already discovered it's 1 when I plug it in here. But what, what is f of x? Well, it's simply this thing there. How do I solve this? Same technique. I have to multiply. Remember this time x is approaching a, which in this case is 0. Okay? And I have to multiply the top by the conjugate, top and bottom, which is the opposite sign. So when I multiply this top, I simply get x plus 1. And when I multiply the, the second part, I get minus 1, and when I multiply the bottom, I'm left with the conjugate times the value of x. 
And you got to remember the conjugate down below should all be in brackets. That way this plus doesn't affect that. Okay, so this all disappears. And it's remember it's as x approaches 0. So up top, 1 minus 1. I'm left with x. The x is cancel. So I'm left with 1 over the square root of x plus 1 plus 1 as x approaches a, which happens to be 0. So I'm left with 1 over the square root of 1 plus 1, which is 1 over 2. So again, the key thing to remember that x isn't really always approaching 0. x is approaching the value of a. If you forget that, and they had made a is equal to 1 up here, and you instead make x approach 0, you won't get the right answer. So it's the same technique. This other one is just all about using... Um, I'm going, to, I'm going to do the H method because I like it better. But first we've got to find what is F of A, which is F of minus 1, which they give you right here. And that means it's 5 over minus 1, which is negative 5. So we have a point negative 1, negative 5. If I put it in the graphic, it's going to be 5. And instead of X, I'm doing X plus A. What was A? x plus minus 1. Now it's important to always remember that you must put in it as x plus a because that's how we're doing it. Actually it's not x plus a, it's x plus h or a plus h rather and you must always put it in that format. So what was a? It was minus 1. Okay, All of it minus and this is a separate thing, minus 5. All of it over h as h approaches 0. Tough to remember that stuff, but all they're doing is they're putting an a in there where it's just more annoying. Now, obviously, you can't subtract. Oh, what is this? This becomes plus 5, right? Minus minus 5 becomes plus 5. Obviously, I can't add 5 to a fraction unless I make that fraction. We have the same denominator. To make that have the same denominator, I must multiply it by top and bottom at the same denominator. By the way, this can be rewritten as h minus 1. When I do that, I get 5 plus 5 times minus 1 plus h. I'll just keep it in the same format. All of it over h. Oh, all of it over minus 1 plus h. All of it over h. Because the only thing I made common denominator was up here. Okay, that's good. I'm going to get rid of that. I put this. Well, let's resolve this top. We got 5 times minus 1, so it's minus 5, and 5 times h, so it's plus 5h. So what am I left with? That. What happens to 5 plus minus 5? It's the same as 5 minus 5. I've got that. So far, so good. Now, all this fraction up above is being divided by the fraction h over 1. When you have a fraction, you can instead multiply it by the reciprocal. So I had h over 1 down here. So it's multiplied by 1 over h. Right away, I can see these are canceled. And I'm left with 5 over minus 1 plus h. All of it is h approaches 0. But minus 5 again. Boom. Now it just so happens that these results are the same, but that is the slope of this tangent line for when A is minus 1 in this particular case. Okay. Just to make sure, I'm going to do the x minus 1, and it becomes minus 5x to the minus 2, which becomes x squared, and for this it becomes minus 5. Yep, that's the correct answer. Not up here, but the thing we found out, minus 5, is the slope of the tangent line. I'm not going to bother doing the other method. It's the same thing. Okay? You should just practice more yourself. Use the definition of derivative to find the derivative of this. Use the definition. So they want us to do it the long way. Yep, they do. Okay. I like, uh, instead of using A, I like using the H method. That's just me. Both methods work, and technically they're the same thing. Oh, I already had all this stuff there, didn't I? 
So I'll make a copy of this. And I'll go here this time. Like that. And crop it. Okay. Um, is Was that absolute value? That first one? No. Just, it was just a flashing thing. Okay, it's the flashing cursor. Okay, this one's pretty easy, so I'm not going to do it because it's a line. The derivative is just going to be minus 5 times the x value. Um, I'm going to do it instead this one. Okay, but the technique is the same, so I'm going to do it. So we're looking for f of x plus h minus f of x, and they're not giving us any value for x. So obviously, this minus f of x. And here's the big secret. You must put this whole function in brackets because this minus is affecting both terms in here. And what's f plus a h? Let me just do it a little bit more. There we go. Do it a little bit more same. There we go. Like that. And what's x plus h? Well, wherever you see x, you're going to do this. Cubed minus 7x plus h. See, I've got to put it in for both things in here before I expand. Let's expand this first. I get minus 7x minus 7h. So I can get rid of that. And just put it over here. Remember, this is all this left term. And let me expand this. So to expand it, you're going to have to learn your trinomials. And the expansion of that is 1, 2, 2, 1. So it's going to be x cubed plus x or plus 2 x squared h plus 2 x h squared plus 1. All of it's going to be multiplied by 6. So I get 6 here, 12 here, 12 here, and 6 here. Great. That is this expansion there. So I can get rid of it. Really helps if you learn your uh, expansions for, for cubes. So this is that, and this is part of it, and I should see if there's any common factors. I have x cubed, x h's, x h squared, and this last one is 6 h cubed minus 7 x minus 7 h. No, I don't have any factors. But I can now subtract this thing up here. So I get minus 6 x cubed, and this minus goes as plus 7x, so it's plus 7x. Ah, notice this. Oh, just the, just this part of it, and this part of it. They cancel each other out. Okay, minus, notice this, and this one. They cancel each other out. And now after that, I'm left with things that only have h in them. So I'm going to factor out an h from each of them. So I'm left with 12x squared. Probably should have been left with 13x squared. No. Let me make sure of my things. One, oh, yeah. Damn it. 1, 2, 1. It's actually 1, 3, 3, 1. So this should not have been, God, I went in 1, 2, 2, 1, stupid. So this is multiplied by 2, it's multiplied by 3. And this is not 12, it's multiplied by 3. And that 6 is correct. Okay, so it's 18x. So I'm left with 18x squared, once I factor out this h, plus 18 xh plus 6h squared minus 7. There, that makes perfect sense. And that's when I factor out an h minus 7 here. And the h's cancel out. Now, the other thing that people might find annoying with calculus is how much calculations you do. And they want you to get used to it. So remember, these h's now canceled. And now we're looking for it as if h approaches 0. Well, as h approaches 0, it multiplies these things, so they disappear. As h approaches 0, it gets rid of this. And we're left with 18x squared minus 7x is the formula for the slope of the tangent.
for this function. That's how you do it. So you, you find the whole thing over and over again. Once you get used to doing it and you're confident that you can do it without air in the long format, you can go to Symbolab and other things and let them derive it for you. And they'll show you the steps, usually. And the secret to Symbolab is sometimes Symbolab blocks steps at a certain stage. Just copy and paste just before they block the steps and put it into Symbolab again. And eventually they'll screw up and they'll give you all the steps. Okay, now I'm not going to do the other ones because it's the same technique. This one you have to use a conjugate technique. But that one was the most complicated because you had to expand the cube. And guess what? I made a mistake. So here's how you um, will do all your future expansions. Think of a pyramid where the ones go down the side. And eventually you have to add the middle terms. What is that one? That's anything... That's a plus b squared it becomes 1a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. That's the coefficients in front. Okay, and what's the next step? It goes 1, 3, 3, 1. That's the one I screwed up. What's the next part of the pyramid? 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. This is called Pascal's, I think, pyramid. Look it up. There's also a formula that you can just punch in and figure out any expansion. The Pascal's Pyramid is great to remember on a test. Okay, number seven. In each case, find the derivative using the first principles. Okay. So you might say, oh, it's y is equal to, it's the same as f of x. They're just making you do the delta y. So the delta y is the same thing. It's x plus h. So you're going to get um, y2 minus y1. y1 is simply equal to this formula, and y2 is when x plus h is in this formula. So all we're going to get here is... 6 minus 7 x plus h, all of it minus, in brackets, 6 minus 7 x, all of it over h. And you say, why is it over h? Well, one of them is x plus h, that's x2 minus x1, and you can see the x is just cancel. So it's all over h. Okay, and if I expand this, I get 6 minus 7 x minus 7 h. And if I expand this, I get minus 6 plus 7x. That's because this minus applies to both terms. I can see right away this cancels with this, and this cancels with that, and I'm left with this. And when they cancel, I'm left with minus 7, which means, which means the slope of a tangent, and this makes a lot of sense, the slope of a straight line for the tangent of that straight line is also the slope of the straight line. So she says it's changing consistently. It's minus 7 each time. Minus 7 per 1 units, minus 7 y units for each x unit is the slope. And that makes sense because the slope of a line is the same. It doesn't matter where I take the tangent on the line. It's just going to match that line. So lo and behold, the slope of the tangent for the line is always just the slope of the line. Oh, let's take something really complicated. That's not hard. Let's take this one. So what are my two y values? Well, my one y value is when y is equal to the formula. So that. My second y value is when x is instead x plus h plus 1 and x plus h minus 1. And then I simply put my y2 minus my y1. And all of it over h. You might say, I can't subtract those. 
I can't subtract those. I've got x plus h minus 1. It's almost the same. Well, you can. Um, you have to multiply this guy here by him. And you have to multiply this guy here, top and bottom, by him. And that is because we are cross multiplying and multiplying the denominators to create one big denominator. And what's the one big denominator? It's simply this times that. Okay, so that means all of this upper area, all of this upper area, we're just going to put in that. The denominator is that. And let's just put that aside. And it's all divided by this. And remember to put a big bracket. So put a little bracket be behind around each of your things but put a big square bracket around this so that you remember to, after you expand it to apply it. Okay, for a moment here, I'm going to forget that it's all being divided by H, just to make it easier. Woo! That's something. Okay. We can't simplify this at all. Down here, we can't really simplify it too much. Um, but we can expand it x times x, x squared, x times h, plus xh, x times plus 1, plus x, minus 1 times x, minus x, minus 1 times h, minus h, minus 1 times 1, minus 1. Okay, that's the expansion of that. And remember, it's all divided by this. We might as well expand this too. It just so happens that the expansion of this is the same as the thing we just did. Right? Yeah. Let's just leave that for now. Okay. All of that in brackets. And now we're going to minus, and all this in brackets, x plus x, x squared, x plus h, plus xh, x plus times minus 1, minus x. 1 times x, plus x. 1 times h plus h, 1 times minus 1 minus 1. Okay, great. Right away in this one, those disappear. Right away in this one, those disappear. Great. Now this minus can be applied. So you get minus x squared, minus x squared. You get minus xh. You get minus x, minus h rather, and you get plus 1. Great. Now I can take down this bracket. Well, I got x squared here, minus x squared there. So they're going to cancel out. I got plus xh here, minus xh here, and they're going to cancel out. I got minus h, minus h up here. Well, hang on, minus 1, plus 1. And I got minus h. minus h. So I'll get minus 2h. Minus 2h. Great. That's exactly what I wanted. And all of it is being, remember, divided by h. Well, instead of dividing by h, I'm going to multiply by 1 over h. Complicated this one, isn't it? Same steps, though. The h's are going to cancel out. I'm left with minus 2 over, and there's no need to expand the bottom. Just leave it like this. This times that. Great. Now, what was it all approaching? As h approached 0. I get minus 2 over x minus 1 squared. That is the formula for the derivative of the thing we were just looking at. This. 
just to confirm it. Let me use my shortcut, see if it works. Actually, no, I can't, because I'd have to do the product rule and then the chain rule. So it's going to take a long time. So I'm going to do this times this derivative, which is just 1. And then this times this derivative, oh shit, sorry about that, which is that, to the minus 2 times that, okay, um, so, oh yeah, it's a big pain in the butt. So this just becomes 1 over that. Yeah, I'm not going to bother. Let's just say this was actually a faster way to do it, and I think that's right. I might have made an arithmetic error in there, but that was the hardest one in there. Okay, let's do this one. Find, determine the slope of the tangent of this graph when x is 0, 1, and 2. Sketch the graph showing these tangents. Well, first of all, this is a parabola. And if I factor out an x, I get 2x minus 4, which means the two points it goes through the graph, and it's upward facing, by the way, are 0, 0. And when x is... Um, 4 over 2, which is 2. And that means the vertex is here at 1. And when I put in 1 here, I get 1 times 2. So it's at 1 minus 2. So I'm looking at a thing like that. And they want me to sketch it when x is 0. Okay, so this is going to be the tangent line when x is 0. And they want me to sketch when x is 1, which I know is flat. And they want me to do it when x is uh, 2, which is over here. Now, guess what? Because these are identical parts on the graph, this is going to be the negative of that. It's going to be the negative slope. It's going to be the exact same slope, but negative. And actually, it might be reciprocal. Yeah. No, it's going to be the exact same slope, but negative. And it's already easy to see that at the vertex, the slope is going to be 0. Okay, But we can do it the long way. And they want us to do it the super long way, which means when x is 0, we would plug it in and discover y is 0. right? So that's that point there. And then they would want us to do 2x plus h squared, except when x is 0. So they just want us to do 2h squared minus 4x, which is x plus h, but x is 0, which is just minus 4h. So they want us to do 2h squared minus 4h minus 0 all over h. Well, it's quite easy to see that the h's are going to cancel out here once and here. And you're going to be left at top with 2h minus 4. And when h approaches 0, it's going to be minus 4. So that means when x is 0, the slope of the tangent right here is minus 4. Now let's see if this one's positive 4. Okay, so when x is 2, when x is 2 and I plug it in, I get a y of 4, 8, minus 8. I believe I get a y of 0. 4, 8, minus 8. Yeah, I get a y of 0. And that means that if I'm going to plug it in again, it's all over h, and I'm going to replace this time x plus h, but this time x is 2. So 2 plus h squared minus 4, 2 plus h when x is 2 all minus my y value of 0. So it's just, we forget about it. All we have to do is expand this. And when we 
can just move my little graph up here. And there's my tangent of my other one, my tangent of point uh, x1 is 0. And so I'm just trying to show that this next one's going to be positive 4. So if I expand this, I get 2 times 4 plus 4h plus h squared minus 8 minus 4h all over h. And if I expand this, I get 8 plus 4h times 2, which is 8h, plus 2h squared plus 2h squared. Oh, yeah, this is minus 8. 2h squared. Great. Well, this minus 8 and this 8 cancels out. Okay. And this 8h minus 4h becomes 4h. Positive 4h plus 2h squared. And all of that is over h. So you can see the h's here will cancel out. And I'm left with 4 plus 2h. And remember that it's all as h approaches 0. So this becomes 0. And I'm left with positive 4. And sure enough, it makes sense that on opposite sides of a parabola along the same uh, y uh, line, they will have opposite they will have the same slope but going in opposite directions. One's going down, one's going up at the same rate, especially since they're on equal sides of the vertex. Let's also note that any vertex of parabola, the slope of the tangent is going to be zero. So it helps to decipher what you're looking at first. So nine. You should know from functions that nine is a cubic. Okay. So 9 is a cubic, which means it looks like this always. It starts in quadrant 3. And this is uh, f of x is equal to x cubed, which, by the way, is the same as y is equal to x cubed. For those of you who are puzzled, so it comes down, oh, comes from, it comes from here. It kind of does a little squiggle, flattens out a bit, and goes up. And right here, it goes through origin really flat and that's because x times x times x is the cube which means the only thing it goes through is origin they want you to calculate the slope at minus 2 which is going to be up here so it's quite obvious it's going to be sharp minus 1 a little less sharp 0 no need it's flat and then here it's going to be coming back up and then here it's going to be sharp again. And let me let, I'll tell you right now, because these points are equidistant on each side of the vertex, not the vertex, but the central point, this slope here is going to match that slope. And this slope here is going to match that slope. Exactly. Okay, let's prove it. And then they want us to sketch the derivative. And guess what? The derivative is going to be 3x squared, which is a parabola. So this is going to be the derivative. And that means whatever value of x I will be able to find here. And let's use the derivative to verify our answers as well. OK. Let's just do it for minus 2 first. Let's find out what is minus 2. What is the y? So when it's minus 2 in here, the y is minus 8, which means I'm going to do um, x plus h, except that x is minus 2, so I'm going to do h minus 2, if you can't follow that, cubed minus minus 8. And why is it minus minus 8? Because we're always subtracting the y value, and the y value is minus 8. These minuses are not related, all over h. Okay, what's the expansion of the left side? Well, it for a cubic, it is 1, 3, 3, 1. <coughs> so it's going to be h squared. Oh, and here's the tough part. Because it's minus 2, damn it. It's going to be h cubed. And hang on. Plus 3, plus 3, plus 1. And it's going to be h squared x 
which is minus 2. So that's going to be minus 6. Minus 6. And then this is going to be h1, but x squared, and which is 4. Ooh, 4. And this is where symbol labs a lot e e easier to use. So it's plus 4 squared times the 6, 24 h. And then this last one is going to be this cubed, which is minus 8. Minus 8. So that's the expansion of this. And it's all going to be minus minus 8, which is plus 8. So right away, you can see those cancel, and I'm left with this all over h. h goes into each of these. So over here I'm left with 24, and here I'm left with h, and here I'm left with h squared, and now the bottom denominator can disappear because I factored out the h. And we can see that when h approaches 0, we can ignore these, and we're just left with 24, which means that um, for x is equal to minus 2, the tangent's 24. And if I look at my little parabola when x is minus 2, that is not correct. 3x squared. So I made a mistake somewhere. Probably in the expansion of the cubic. So here's where uh, symbol lab's great when you're tired. So I'm going to just do h minus 2 expanded to the cubed and see where I messed up. And Symbol Lab, when your computer's not slow as hell, you will discover that Symbol Lab is. Come on, come on, come, come, come. Jesus. Uh, yeah. So I did the expansion totally wrong. It's not. It's still plus twelve. What an idiot. Okay. Let's see if that'll copy. Actually, it'll copy like this. Dumb, dumb, dumb. So I'm gonna just take that. It's the expansion. Stupid. So what I end up with is that all over h. Stupid, stupid. Well, minus minus 8, which becomes plus 8. And we can see these cancel. And when I factor out the h, I'm left with this. And that's just to the 2. And then as h approaches 0, these become 0, and I'm left with 12. Stupid. My god. Ah, uh, sorry about that. So plus 12 is the slope for this. And then when you do for minus 1, so for minus 1, when I put it into this, I get a minus 1 result. So it's all going to be minus minus 1. And then when I put 3 times h minus 1 as the thing cubed, that's a lot easier. It's going to be h cubed. That's 1, 3, 3, 1. And it's going to be minus 3h squared. And then it's going to be plus 3h. And then it's going to be minus 1. Just to make sure, h minus 1 cubed. h cubed minus 3h squared plus 3h minus 1. Got it. At least I'm not going crazy. So all that is going to be minus minus 1, which of course is going to become a plus 1. So of course these are going to cancel out. You're going to see that over and over again. And all of it over h. And so you're left with, when these cancel out, you're left with h squared minus uh, 3h plus 3. So you can see the slope there is going to be 3, which makes sense. So, so far we have 24 for that. So when uh, it's minus 2, the slope was 12. When it's minus 1, the slope was 3. When it's 0, I'm going to tell you right now it's 0. Okay, and 
if you want to do zero you can but essentially it becomes uh, x, uh, h cubed because x is zero or sorry yeah when it because x is zero minus when I plug zero in zero so you can see h cubed when it cancels out I'm left with h squared and when h reaches zero it's zero so the answer for when x is zero the tangent is going to be zero when x is one up here y is one it's going to be very similar expansion to this except it's going to all be minus one and this is going to come out with plus one plus three h squared plus um, three and it's going to be canceling out like that then all of it is over h and you're going to discover that you're left with h squared plus three h plus three and as h approaches zero you're going to be left with three the expansion of this one is going to be very similar except the expansion of the cube is going to be h cubed plus 2, yeah, plus 6 h squared minus, no, plus, and it's going to be 6 h uh, like that, and then finally it's going to be 2 cubed plus 8 like that. I hope that's the expansion. All of it minus 8 this time. And once you cancel out all your, these disappear, once you cancel all your H's, you're left with, no, it's plus 12 in there. Jesus Christ. Plus 12. Sorry. Because you get uh, um, the result of 2 is cubed. Yeah. So again, symbol lab to the rescue I'm just tired so this time we're doing x plus 2 expanded yeah there you go right there the second term is plus 12 because there's a, a squaring process and then the f it becomes 4 times 3 stupid god damn it so this is actually plus 12 h so when you get rid of h, you're going to be left with 12. Now, if I'm going to graph this, this based on these dots, you're going to do minus 2, 12, which is here, up here. You're going to do minus 1, 3, which is here. You're going to do 0, 0, which is here. You're going to do this, 1, 3, and 2, 12. And if you join them, you've got a parabola as the tangent. That's the tangent, and it just so happens the formula of that parabola is y is equal to 3x squared. And it's very much related to that. And um, that's how you do it. Sorry for rambling. So I'm probably going to have to stop here because I'm so tired. And especially since we've got a whole bunch coming up. Okay, so that's, I've reached 9, and I pretty much made that a long cluster F.